Hello, everyone, and welcome to Keeping It Young podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Bethley. And we are the Youngs. Hey, thanks for joining us today, and I hope you've had a wonderful week. We are this week in Athens, Georgia, so yes. if you live in that area, would like to join us one night for a, a family revival, we would yes. love to have you, mm-hmm. and uh, so you can find information about that, of course, on our website or on our social media, so reach out to us if we can help you and answer any questions there. And I do want to remind you again, just I hope many of you will still consider joining us in Gatlinburg. Mm, That's yes. October 13, 14, 15. Yes. Uh, you can come Friday night, 15, um, 14 and 15th, the Friday, Saturday. That's entirely fine. The uh, Thursday night is just an extra. That's just right. a bonus if you'd like mm-hmm. to join us for that. It's a beautiful time of the year, and uh, what a, a good investment it would be for your marriage. The couple's prayer advances have always been exceptional, Yes, and I know you're going to enjoy them. There will be counseling available. There will be just some great music. Mm-hmm. We'll have a lot of fun skits, and uh, you'll make a lot of new friends. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we would just love to meet all of you. So if you're able to join us, please, please, please do so. Sign up. Go to Keeping It Young Podcast, and you'll find the link at the very top top of the homepage. Yes. And I know right now it seems like, wow, October, that's a long ways away, but it really isn't. August is just around the corner. And once you get into the school year, the fall just flies, just like our summer is flying right now. (laughs) Absolutely. Summer is moving right along. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, uh, still a lot to cover in our conflict resolution series. Yes. Yes. And uh, thank you for all of you that are reaching out to us. And of course, if we can serve you in any way, you continue to reach out. We started, yes, uh, let's see, last week, start to say yesterday, <laughs> we started uh, last week talking about practical steps to get started. Yes. And uh, the first two were, were huge. Mm. Uh, you got to pray about it. Yes. You've got to learn to listen. Absolutely. And uh, remember two things we said about listening. Listening is a matter of asking questions instead of making accusations. Mm-hmm. And listening is a, a matter of seeking to understand what your spouse is saying and seeing. Yes. And it does go both ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, so wives, you got to try to understand your husband. What is he saying? Mm. Why is he seeing this differently? And husbands, you got to understand your wife. Why is right. she seeing things this way? Why is she, what's she saying here? Mm-hmm. And so you pray about it and you listen to each other. And that really will go a long way yes. in helping to solve conflicts. We have four more practical steps. Okay. All right. So let's just jump, jump in. Number in. three. Number three in a practical step to Conflict resolution is to be kind. To be kind. Mm. The Bible says in Ephesians that we're to be kind one to another. And obviously this is in relation to issues. Mm. Because he says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Right. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Yes. So the point being that in the midst of conflict, in Mm -hmm. the midst of where there's going to need some forgiveness, in the midst of where there's something wrong, he mm-hmm. said to be kind one another. And we quote that a lot to our children. You we know, that's, do. That's a parent verse. That's a, you know, you guys be kind to each other. You guys treat each other well. Mm-hmm. But what a good reminder for those of us who are married. Yes. Kindness goes not just to children mm-hmm. and not just to teenagers, but kindness is essential for those of us who are adults and especially those of us, those of us who are married. Yes, absolutely. And last week we mentioned um, some of those ways that we just exacerbate the conflict instead of actually helping it by nagging or jabbing. We talked mm-hmm. about we talked about um, passive aggressiveness. Mm-hmm. We talked about sarcasm. We talked about all kinds of different things that are negative. And so instead of bringing all that negativity into your conversation to help you resolve that conflict, why don't you just bring kindness? Um, The Bible does tell us that a soft answer turns away wrath. I think that has to do with our volume Mm -hmm. and our tone and also what we're saying. Kindness really encompasses three things. It does uh, encompass our attitude. Mm -hmm. And it is impossible to be kind if your attitude towards your spouse is not right. Right. And so it it, it shows up in our attitude. It shows up in our words. Kindness mm-hmm. is always a matter of words. Yes. And that goes right to that verse you just quoted, a, a soft answer. Right. Kindness is when I'm going to respond to you gently, yes. even if I'm upset. Yes, or even if your spouse is a little bit perturbed and on the upset side. Yeah, so kindness just shows in our words, but it also shows in our actions. Mm. Uh, you know, you can you can make a conflict very difficult if if instead of kindness you cross your arms and glare. 
Right. Uh, we're not kind to people when we glare at them, when we ridicule them, when we mm-hmm. look down on them, when we right. when we harass them, or when we just let it all out upon them. You know. Right. And so kindness is essential. And mm. and if you will determine in your conflict, we're going to have kindness to each other. And you know, I, I we we really 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 are against divorce. Yes. But one of the things that I've I've always respected is when a couple has come to the end that their marriage is no longer working and they have chosen that route. Now I'm I'm not approving of that route. Right. But it's a a far better thing when that couple comes to an end and treats each other with kindness. Yes. Or when there's a a couple that's already you know, divorced and the kids are here one week and they're one week or here one weekend and they're the other week, whatever. Mm-hmm. Kindness really makes all of that work. It does. When I can treat you kindly. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's just something just really almost inhuman because sometimes we'll deal with a situation where somebody is just not kind. They are just mean. Mm. And uh, if, if it's a guy and he's just mean, he just, he's biting, he belittles, he's sarcastic he always takes the other side. He's always going to choose the opposite view. <laughs> uh, it's just, he's just not kind. Right. And, and that's, that's inhumane. And, and a lady can be the same way where she's, she's just always biting, where she's harsh, where she's hard, where she's sarcastic. Right. A kindness is essential in solving a conflict resolution. Anything Absolutely. you would add to that? I would just say how much better, though, to learn to be kind early in your marriage and during conflict resolution than waiting till there's just no hope. Right. Um, and aren't yeah. emotions reciprocated? Yes. Like, like if you are at a Walmart and you're, you're, you know, going through a checkout line, of course, now you do it yourself. <laughs> In the old yeah. days, back when we would go through checkout line and, and, you know, here's the, the person they're you know, ringing up your purchases, uh, their, uh, their emotions affected everything. Yeah. So you get a person who's happy and they're talking and they're smiling uh, typically, you'll notice that people in line are happy and talking and smiling. True. And if you get a person and it's obvious they don't like it, they don't want to be at work, they hate their job, and they <laughs> probably hate you too. Uh, it affects everything. So you right. leave there. You leave that. You don't even know this person, but you leave that, you know, that inter- after that exchange, mm-hmm. you leave feeling a little put out. You, right. you know, And you come home and you say to your wife, you will not believe what the person at Walmart did to me. Right. Uh, so, so the point being kindness, kindness is just one of those things in life that is, is, is spirituality Yes, because I can treat you kindly. Even if I disagree with you, I can show you gentleness. I can show mm-hmm. you love. I, I can respond to you in a biblically appropriate ways. Yes. So kindness is, is essential. It Any, is. Anything else to add? We'll give I, the next I don't one. think so. I think we can go on to All number right. four. Number four is a big one. This it one's is. great. How do you solve conflicts? What's a, what's a, What's a good step? Number four is use praise. Yes. Use praise. Now, I read this recently. Tell me what you think. Mm-hmm. I read recently that uh, it takes seven to eight positives for every negative to offset mm. a negative. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, how do you come up with that? You know, do you, do you <laughs> hang around a person and count them? I mean, I, I don't know how you come up with that. Right. But those who study these things w- will often say that it takes takes a large amount of positives to overcome a negative, which goes back to what we said last week. Mm-hmm. because the point we made last week was that the best way to solve conflicts is to treat it as a package deal. Right. Mm-hmm. When, when your marriage, when you really are, you know, working on your marriage, you really are trying to serve the Lord together. You really mm-hmm. are trying to pray together. Right. You really are, you know, trying to schedule dates and you have meals together and, mm-hmm. and you're treating each other kindly. When it's a package deal, then, then conflicts are always negative. Mm-hmm. But if you if you have a package deal of six or seven or eight positives, then this one negative doesn't blow the marriage out of the water. True. So True. that that's the whole goal in this one. So you use praise, mm-hmm. and and I would say to you couples, if you're going to fight fair, you have to learn to make praise a practice in your marriage. Mm. And and this is a practical step, yes. but it's an important one. It is. And uh, to praise God for your spouse, start there. Start in prayer. Go back to mm-hmm. point one and pray about these conflicts. Right. But praise God for your spouse. Mm-hmm. And even a spouse that may not be everything you think they ought to be, uh, no, nobody is so far gone that there's not something about them you can praise God for. True. And you can say, Lord, you know, I'm thankful for the years we had together that were good. Mm-hmm. We're not doing well right now, but I can praise you that our sp- my spouse did so well in those first 10 years of our marriage. This 11th year has been a hard one. Right. But you're praising God. And, and look for other reasons. Maybe your spouse is hardworking. Maybe your spouse is... 
uh, you know, is, is OCD. And sometimes we take these things about a person's personality and turn them into negatives. Like, True. oh my word, you always want the bed made and the pillows put here. <laughs> or you can respond to that in praise. You know, mm-hmm. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Isn't that wonderful that you always keep the bed made? Mm-hmm. Or isn't that wonderful that you always keep the bathroom clean? Isn't that wonderful that you always want the, you know, the, the laundry put away? Mm-hmm. Right. And so you praise, praise, praise. Praise is essential. And think of Proverbs 31. Mm. Um, her husband praised her. Yes. And her children rise up and call her blessed. Mm. So praise is a big one. What would you add it to that It is a one? big one. Well, I was just wondering about that first point, that seven to eight positives, you need that many to make up for one negative. But honestly, even if we um, think of it in terms of uh, children, There are children who grow up with negativity in the home and they carry those wounds with them their entire Mm. life. So then maybe they bring that into a marriage and they've got those wounds from, I never measure up. I'm never good enough. My grades are never good enough, whatever it is. Sure. And then if let's say it's the husband that brings that into the marriage and then he has a wife who is constantly pointing out, um, you didn't do this right. You didn't do this right. You didn't diaper the baby right. You didn't take the trash out right. Or you didn't take the trash out on time. Then that wound will just get deeper and deeper and it will take a lot of positives to fill that hole back up or to heal that woundedness. And so how much better than to look for the positives and not Mm -hmm. um, major on the negatives. I remember it was Ruth Bell Graham, I think, who said, take the negatives to the Lord and your positives to your mate. So if you feel like there's something that's negative going on, obviously that doesn't fit anywhere in this whole steps for conflict resolution because then you wouldn't even be talking about it. But first take it to the Lord and just say, you know what, I feel like this is a negative. And I have found that the Holy Spirit is so much better at being the Holy Spirit than I can be. And certainly when you are talking about a conflict, you don't want to compound it with negative speech over and over. Um, How much better would it be to go into the conflict resolution by saying, first of all, I want to tell you, you're doing a great job at this. Um, There's just one little thing that hurt my feelings so bad that I had a meltdown. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that is valid because we tend to think, we tend to glam, not glamour, uh, glamorize, glorify. We tend to glorify the negative Mm. and it gets all the attention. And yet when when we we do come to to a conflict and we can say, you know what, uh, I know you did all of this right, but this thing here really bothered me. Right. Or this thing here was really wrong. Mm-hmm. But when you've you've come, you know, you've you've added around it, you've circled it with all of the positives. Yes. Then that one negative is a lot more uh, palatable. It can more easily be handled, confronted, discussed, mm-hmm. and dealt with. Mm-hmm. But a person who feels like everything is negative, when we feel like everything is negative, right. it will always undermine solving a conflict. Right. And there are certain personalities that hold on to negatives. So maybe your spouse tells you 50 things a day that you did right, but they said one thing that seemed a little off. Um, You know, you just hold on to that one thing and it becomes a wound. So be careful about that too, that if something negative is said, that you don't hold on to it, that you try to resolve it. Yes. And Paul addresses that when he says to the church at Philippi, to think on things that are true, and then mm-hmm. he, he doesn't stop there. He says, think on things true, honest, just, lovely, pure, and have a good report. Mm. Because there are things that are true. Yes, they just said this, This what they said was very negative. That was a very mm. negative thing. Right. So that's true. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, if you dwell on that, you're also violating the other list because mm. it's not lovely mm. and it's not of a good report. True. And we, we, often, we often hang on to things that we know to be true. Mm-hmm. But we're violating scripture in doing so because it's not just true things we're to think on. We're to, we're to think on the things that are also honest, just, lovely, pure, and of right. a good report. Right. And so your thought processes are essential in this matter of praise and thinking right. Absolutely. And and honestly, I can, I can say as a woman, and not from marriage conflict, um, but when you're in the thick of something that is negative, that becomes your focus. 
your heart just focuses on all of those negatives instead of trying to find something that is true and lovely and of good report and Mm -hmm. honest. Um, And so just be very careful about that, ladies, that you're not you know, thinking, wow, this is day three of us not seeing eye to eye on this. Instead say, you know what, this is three days out of 31 in this month that we have not seen eye to eye. We're doing very well. My husband is wonderful and he takes good care of me. And that's what I'm going to focus on. That's awesome. That's really good. So let's uh, move on. You ready to move on? Yes. All Uh right. Number five is a be forgiving. Five. Be forgiving. Hmm. That's a, that's a huge one. It Every is. conflict to be resolved requires forgiveness. Absolutely. And a happy marriage someone said is the union of two good forgivers. <laughs> yes. And we both have to forgive all the time. You know, we get our feelings hurt or something was said. We are living in a world where we're married to sinners. Yes. All of us are. Yes. And the result of that means that <clears throat> we're going to offend each other. We're going to say things we shouldn't have said. We're going to do things we shouldn't have done. And often we're without excuse. There's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. It's not like there was a, sometimes it's premeditated and that, that, it's going to require harder, but sometimes it's just, we're just living in a sin cursed world. Right. So we have to learn to forgive Yes. and start here as often as possible. Let's just assume the best about your spouse. Yes. As often as possible, assume the best. Right. And that, that can be hard. Yes. But that's, so that's a key to forgiveness. If your husband comes in and he's had a hard day and normally he comes straight to you and greets you with a hug or a kiss, um, normally asks you about his, your day, but he comes in very distracted or um, just focused on whatever happened in his day and he doesn't do the normal, instead of ladies thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, we have a huge problem, think to yourself, okay, this is not normal. Let's give him some grace. Maybe it was a bad day. Maybe he didn't sleep well last night. Um, and so we'll just see what where this is headed. And honestly, that is not just giving him grace, but that is giving him forgiveness. You know what? Yes. I'm totally not even going to focus on that. Yeah. And Bethy's really good at that because I do have a tendency to be focused. I can <laughs> I can be very, very focused on the task at hand or the next thing on the list. Right. And, uh, and, and over, you know, um, respond in a way that I shouldn't have responded or totally ignore something that I should have done. Mm-hmm. And so this is, this is normal forgiveness. When forgiveness yes. is essential, there's two things that are true. Mm. Number one, it has to be voluntary. Yes. You cannot force forgiveness. No, you can't. And I've even yeah. had conversations with people, not with David, but with other people who are like, I had no idea you need to forgive me for right now. I need your forgiveness right now. Say it right now. And, you know, as a Christian lady, I want to say, well, of course I forgive you. Um, But it's a little shocking um, when you take that approach of, oh, I just need to get this forgiven right now. Um, Obviously, when we come to the Lord with our sin and we confess our sin and we ask for forgiveness, he forgives us instantaneously. And obviously that can happen in a marriage too, but you cannot demand it. But even in a marriage, knowing that God forgives us doesn't mean we always act on it. We right. know it's instantaneous, but we can still deal with the feelings, the emotions, yes. and the struggle. So we have to mm-hmm. choose to forgive. It's voluntary. Yes. Uh, and, and the idea of forgiveness is we realize that we're owed a debt that really can't be repaid. Yes. So someone has done us wrong, so they owe us, mm-hmm. and, and yet there's really nothing that could be done to pay that debt. Right. Or maybe because they're not willing to pay it, but often because it, it happened, it's in the past, no matter mm-hmm. what happens, it still happened, it's, it's right. always, it happened, it can't be changed that it happened. Right. So we, we have to recognize that we're owed a, a debt, we, it just can't be repaid, so mm-hmm. what we do in forgiveness is we release the debtor, and we just accept the debt as paid. Yes. We just accept that. We say, okay, Mm -hmm. you can't pay it, so I forgive you. I release what you owe me. You did Mm -hmm. me wrong and you owe me. You owe me an explanation. You owe me a, you know, I don't know. You owe me a car. Yes. (laughs) You owe me a vacation. (laughs) A car. Uh, You know, (laughs) you owe me three weeks of cleaning the house. I don't know how how far Mm. you go with that. But the thing is, there's no way you can pay a debt when someone has wronged you. That it, 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 it will always be there. That wrong will always be there. Right. But you can forgive it. So it's voluntary. You can say, I release you. Yes, absolutely. And I would say about the former point, um, focus on the positives, use praise, and being forgiving. Um, there might be someone who's listening to us right now, and you are in um, 
a very difficult marriage. Mm. Things are just Mm -hmm. very, very uh, hard. Um, Maybe there's some abuse in the home or we are not talking to you. We are talking to couples who have misunderstandings and who maybe have let things go and have some con- conflict resolution that is, you know, will take some time and will take some effort, um, but normally would have a happy marriage. They do work on their marriage. Um, if you are coming from a very, very hard situation, I'm not saying that you should never forgive because the Bible does teach us that we need to forgive. And the Bible does teach us that we need to focus on things that are true and honest and lovely. But if you are in that difficult situation, um, you really do need to reach out and get some help. We're not trying to gloss over anything that would be that difficult, that problematic. We are um, certainly not wanting you to put yourself in a situation that would be um, unhealthy healthy or um, dangerous to you or to your children. Sure. Th- those are situations that are beyond conflict resolution. Absolutely. For sure. So be forgiving. Uh, remember, it is essential. By the way, we will, uh, at the end of this series, we'll also address you that are in difficult situations where a conflict cannot be resolved. Yes. So we'll come to that. Okay. And this will hang right in there. So be forgiving. It has to be voluntary. And mm-hmm. the second thing is it has to be received. Mm. Forgiveness has to be received. I can't force it. Right. But I accept it with humility. I accept forgiveness with humility because I know I don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, I then take steps to rebuild the broken pieces or to rebuild trust. Right. So forgiveness is a, in a sense, is a, is a step. I forgive mm-hmm. you. Yes. But it's also a process. If, if I, if I receive forgiveness, the process then begins uh, there's a process of humility. I don't deserve you to forgive me, but I will take steps to rebuild broken pieces and right. I will take steps to rebuild broken trust. Yes. And uh, so that's all summed up in this word forgiveness. I would say that, um, David, you are so much better at this than I am. And maybe it's because um, men can compartmentalize things in um it's not that you don't feel it. You do feel very deeply. But once we've talked things through, you can say, I forgive you. Do you forgive me? We can, you know, talk this back and forth. And then David is usually, he's just like, all right, well, um, let me give you a big hug and a smooch right now. And sometimes as a woman, because I'm still feeling the immense emotion of <laughs> our big conversation, I'm just like, uh, either I feel like I'm not ready to forgive you or I feel like, oh, I've been so horrible. I'm not ready to accept your forgiveness. <laughs> and so, um, ladies, if that's you, if you're where I am, just, you know, give it to the Lord and offer, offer that forgiveness and offer to receive that forgiveness. Go right. ahead and get that hug. Go ahead and get that kiss. And if you feel like, like right now, I just really can't just say, can, can you give me a minute? <laughs> right. You know, I think the whole key there might be that our emotions take time to catch up with our facts. Absolutely. And that's okay. It that's is okay. God designed us. Our emotions often can't just swing right around. And, right. you know, probably for, for men, typically by, you know, by and large can make that transition more quickly mm-hmm. than women. And, and it's okay. But we often need our heart to follow our actions instead of our actions to follow our heart. That's true too. That's yes. very good. Well, there's one more and we're out of time. And that would be simply, um, what are practical steps to get us started? Pray about it. Listen, be kind, use praise, be forgiving. And last of all, and we'll close here today, practice humility. Mm. And humility is not thinking little of yourself. It's not, you know, some will say, well, humility is not thinking of yourself at all. Mm. But that's not true in the Bible because you're commanded to be humble. You're commanded to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. True. So humility is actually thinking honestly about yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, humility says, you know, I blew that. And I received forgiveness. Right. I'm being honest. Humility goes a long way. Yes. And, and of course, in a spiritual sense, humility brings the grace of God. Yes. But in a marriage, mm-hmm. humility also brings grace. Yes. And uh, so that's a good place to end. Practice humility in your life. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're you're supposed to be humble. You know, somebody says, well, you know, if you're, if a person is is, uh, you know, if they know it, they're probably not. <laughs> and, and, you know, if, if you think you're humble, you're probably not. But that's really probably not a wise way to see it because God's word commands us to mm. be humble. Yes. God's word commands us to humble ourselves. So we should know whether or not we're humble. Mm. 
Right. And in a marriage relationship, humility will go a long ways. Yes. And so think about that this week. Think about what is humility and how can I practice it in our marriage and in our conflict resolution. Right. Now, if you'll join us next week, mm-hmm. next week we're going to just go a little step further and, and give really the question to kind of wind everything up is how do you handle conflicts in a healthy way? We'll just talk through really the goal next week will be to talk through perceptions, handling perceptions, understanding perceptions. So we'll start winding things together uh, or winding things down and weaving things together and and maybe bringing this to an end. So, uh, Well, the first part of the series about marriage conflict resolution, and then we will step into to the family. Yes. Absolutely. All right. We're out of time. Thank you so much for listening today. And uh, if you haven't visited our site in a while, all of our podcasts episodes are available at Keeping It Young Podcast. Right. There's uh, almost 100, oh, going on 120 of them pretty soon here. Mm. And uh, so we cover a ton of material. If uh, Look them over. And if, if you think this would be a help to somebody, like it, share it, and uh, certainly make sure you're putting into practice what you're learning. Yes. Have a great week. The Keeping It Young Podcast is a Bax 5 Media Production.